Insperity presents the Small Business Advocate Show with Jim Blassingame, brought to you by FedEx, CareerBuilder.com, and Palo Alto Software. This is a copyrighted production of Small Business Network, Inc., all rights reserved. Sitting in the morning sun, I'll be sitting in the evening The late, great Otis Redding, ladies and gentlemen, bringing us back. Seven till, I'm Jim Blassingame. Thank you very much for staying with me. Having a great visit with our good friend Chad Mutre, Chief Economist for the National Association of Manufacturers. That's NAM.org. And uh, Chad's been a member, of our, a member of our brain trust and a great friend for a long time. We're talking about manufacturing jobs in America. Chad, one of the things that uh, has been the, one of the most ironic and, and, uh, and uh, uh, an odd things that you wouldn't, you wouldn't think would be the case in America these days is the fact that uh, we've got uh, maybe as many as 25 million people unemployed or underemployed, and yet one of the top two greatest concerns of business owners is finding qualified. They have openings, yeah. but they have can't find qualified people. Talk about water, water everywhere, and not a drop to drink. I, when I speak to manufacturers, and I and I do this as much as I can. Uh, this is one. This is almost universal problem. Uh, they're looking for qualified workers. We, we've estimated that there are at least six hundred thousand un, unfilled jobs in the manufacturing sector. Right. Uh, and you know these are mechanics, engineers, uh, welders, janitors. I mean it goes across mm-hmm. the board. Uh, you, you know you put up a job posting in manufacturing, and you're and, and you're going to get thousands of, of applicants. But by the time you whittle it down to actually who's qualified and uh, and, and you know, really, if, is there enough people there that really can fit that job? Uh, they, they really struggle with that, and and you know, and part of it is, is is a perception issue. You know, when you ask young people about manufacturing, it's like mom and apple pie and small business. Everyone loves manufacturing, right? But when you ask a youth, are you going to go work uh, as a blue collar worker? Are you going to go work in a manufacturing facility? And they say no. <laughs> um, and you know, and, I, and I'm as guilty of that as anybody else. I'm I, I'm a PhD economist. I'm a, I'm a white collar worker. Uh, but but I think that we need to do, we need to do a better job of of convincing our our young people that manufacturing is a is a high paying high skilled job. Yep. Uh, we need to convince more that, people that to they go sh- into, that, that they sh- that go they into should the trade. Go into t- they should de- educate themselves for those jobs. Chad, I told yeah. you this offline. I took my audience has heard me tell the story before. Um, I asked a, a man who just built a paper mill. For for one of the national one of the international companies, he just built a brand new, brand new plant, a plant, and he was running it for a time being, which is what he did. He built them and ran them for a little bit. And I said, I said, how many of your employees use technology in the direct performance of their job? I and mean, I included all the plant workers. He said, one hundred percent. Yep. So the the I the you know my dad, my dad for a long time when I was a little kid. My dad was a hammersmith in a, in, a, in a forging mill, steel forging mill. He didn't use any technology, yeah. you know. But that's not the kind of jobs we have in manufacturing these days, is it? No, it's, it's definitely not your father's manufacturing. That's right. It's, not the, it's not that sweatshop, you know, perception that people have. This is a, this is a very high skilled, high paying job, uh, and I think we you know we need to do a better job of convincing people to go into it. We also need to do you know, and this is a larger issue even beyond manufacturing. We need to do a better job with STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and math. We're, uh, we're behind in America on that, aren't we? We just aren't doing enough in our educational system to be educating the next generation of, of innovators and, 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 and business folks and, 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 and people for our factories. And I think that that, that I think, is, is, is a real downfall for, for our you know, real indictment of our educational system. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, that's, that's bigger than manufacturing. Uh, and it's, you know, it's true for beyond manufacturing. I, I know I spoke to a, a plumbing manufacturers group uh, just a few months ago, and they, they're looking for plumbers. So, you know, I, I think that, you know, again, we just need to do a better job of convincing people to go into the trade. Uh, right. And, and, and also to, to, to focus on math and, and science and engineering. All, all of those things are very important. Right. Absolutely. Uh, what else are you working on with the, at the NAM, NAM these days that we can look forward to? Well, you know, we have a study coming out a little bit later today looking at the effect of uh, defense sequestration 
uh, on on manufacturing. You know, it's not just the, the big guys. This, a lot of people t- t- in the that, that, this is where this is where the uh, the the uh, the situation at the end of the year, the budget right. uh, uh, situation at the end of the year that the Congress has painted the corner they painted themselves into will will take take a big hit out of the out of the defense budget. That's right. I mean, not, it's not just the fiscal cliff. So definitely, we're going to see that five to six hundred billion dollar hit because of tax increases from the Bush tax right. cuts expiring and the payroll tax and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. But you also have uh, a chunk of, of budget cuts that are coming, uh, a, 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 a disproportionate share of which are coming out of defense. Which is going to affect uh, and, manufacturing. And, and, and that's going to affect manufacturing. And it's I mean, going to ripple just, all the way down to small business. You know, everyone from, you know, who's not, just not those big uh, contractors, there's a lot right. of subcontractors and people in the supply chain are going to be affected. Uh, and, have, and the people who feed those people and the people who provide the gasoline for those people on the way to work and all that kind of stuff. It ripples. Hey, Chad, this has been great having you back. We've missed you. We're glad you're back. We're gonna, we're not, now, that we've, now that we've hooked back up to you, we're not going to let you get away. Come back again real soon. I will. I will. Nice Dr. Chad Moutre, ladies and gentlemen, Chief Economist for the National Association of Manufacturers. He'll be back another day. I'll be back after the news. I'm Jim Blassingame. Stay with me. Insperity presents the Small Business Advocate Show with Jim Blassingame, brought to you by FedEx, CareerBuilder.com, and Palo Alto Software. This is a copyrighted production of Small Business Network, Inc., intended for the private use of our audience, except as otherwise provided by copyright law. All other copying, redistribution, or publication without prior written consent is prohibited. All rights reserved.